God bless each and one of you. Let's all go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. In the name of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Verse 22, awesome. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and thy name many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then I, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25. And the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was found upon a rock. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Verse 27. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. Great was the fall of it. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is saying here that those who say, Lord, Lord, those are not the ones who are going to end in, enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, we all have a habit of thinking that if we all act like we're living a holy life, that we will enter the kingdom of heaven. But God is saying that if we do God's will, if we do our Father's will, who is in heaven, we will enter the kingdom of heaven. But another thing he's... The other thing the Holy Spirit wants us to go over is, look what Revelation chapter 22 says. Look, the Holy Spirit is speaking, brothers and sisters. Christ is coming very soon, and the churches need to open up their eyes to the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to go to verse 12, and we're going to read down until the Holy Spirit says for us to finish. In the name of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and that may, they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and hosts. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Amen. Brothers and sisters, those who are living an un ungodly life will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But those who are right who are right now living like this, those who are murderers, those who are living in sexual immorality. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, there is hope in Christ Jesus that he transforms people. That he makes a new creation out of people, all of us. Because when sin entered the world, it affected all the offsprings that came from Adam and Eve. And since there is sin in the world, God, you know, he could have done anything he wanted. He could have even despaired us if he wanted to. But he loved us so much that he sent his beloved son to the world to die on the cross for each and one of us. That he made a way for us. He taught us how to live. He taught us how to live by the obedience and the will of God. But also for us to receive eternal life through him and through his death and resurrection. Now, brothers and sisters, those who are in the churches not having a relationship with God, I'm telling you that... Brothers and sisters, right now it's the time to get right with God. And God's mercy and grace is so great that, brothers and sisters, he sent his son for us. For John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only and beloved son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, Christians cannot lose their salvation, but they could depart from living an un you know, an unholy life, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven, even though they know about God. 
Now those who stay obedient in the path of God, doing the will of God and having a relationship with him and doing as well spreading the gospel to each other, then you are living the life that God wants you to be doing. And yes, God has many paths individual for each one of us, but our main thing in each Christian life that's individual that God says for each one of us is to be spreading the gospel and to have a relationship with him. For us to repent and confess that he is Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, listen. God is is coming very soon. We've been seeing on the news how many things of the Bible been adding up of the things, you know, that's been happening very recently, long ago, and to now. We are living in the last days and Christ is coming very soon. And us as Christians, we have a big responsibility. We are supposed to be spreading the gospel, telling lives that, that there's hope, that you could escape the judgment of hell for our sins and receive eternal life through Jesus Christ by repentance and by confessing that he is Lord. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, Jesus loves each and one of you. The word says how God transformed each and one of us into a new creation. Brothers and sisters, those who come to the Lord, we live a new life, a life of holiness and obedience in Christ. Brothers and sisters, and brothers and sisters, when we come to Christ and God starts working with each one of our lives, not every you know, everybody sometimes it's a fast movement. They go, you know, they quickly, you know, walk in, in the Lord's path. Some people they walk slowly. I'm a witness to this. When God worked it with me and my family, it worked it slow. But it did happen. And brothers and sisters, when we submit to God, when we pray and be a dis, uh, disciplined Christian to be praying and to be reading his word daily, brothers and sisters, God sends us to, to be spreading the gospel. If we found the truth, the truth lives, lives within us. We should be spreading the truth so that others could also receive the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ and the gospel of God. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is right now touching people to be spreading his word. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the Lord says that it don't matter if, you're, if your friends tell you uh, this or that. To be, you know, your old self. To be, you know, it don't matter who backstabs you. It doesn't matter because God's been with you since the beginning. He's been the one providing for you. The one who lets you see. The one who lets you eat. The one who lets you live every day. And brothers and sisters, another thing the Lord wants to say is that those who have disabilities, even though everyone does in the world, that one big disability we all have is sin. But those who have disabilities, there's no, they're no uh, uh, lower than us. And we are no higher than them. Us, us as people, we are all equal. But when we come to God, we are not only in his image, but we are showing the image of Christ just by living the life of purification and holiness. Now, Brothers and sisters, Christ wants us to be living this every single day as his followers, as his fishermen, to be fishing for men and telling them about the gospel. Brothers and sisters, God wants us to be telling them about the coming of Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's great to talk about the blessings, but we need to talk about the judgment, the wrath, and the coming of Christ now. Brothers and sisters, the reason why I say that is, and it's not even me, the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you this, that because the time is soon that Christ is coming. It says in the word how, how there's many people who enter through the narrow path, but only few who find eternal life. Brothers and sisters, there's still hope, but brothers and sisters, listen to this. Many people will reject, will reject the truth since the truth is the truth. It says that those who love living the lie, love living the falseness of this world that's so false, that's so sink into sin. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the light of the world. He never said for us to partner up with the world. He never said for, for leaders to fight against leader, for us to be gossiping of one another. He never said to be gossiping about other churches. He never said for us to be, uh, you know, you know, spreading lies in the churches. 
aware of this doctrine about about when once when Christ comes to pick up his people, how there will be two different judgments, the holy one and those who them are wrong in their life before accepting Christ, or they'll be thrown in the fire. Then why would not all the people would be going up? Brothers and sisters, those who live a holy life, those who, who dead go first, and then those who are alive, only those who serve the Christ truthfully will be going up. Now, it's going to be a holy judgment once when Christ raptures us up. Now, those who are still, uh, those who didn't live the life, you know, of, of holiness down here will stay back and will live through the tribulation. That's where the mark of the beast comes. Now, that's also another trace to those who stay. And yes, people could still be saved even though, you know, people could still be saved even though they stay. But the, the, the tribulation, once when Christ picks up his people, it's not going to be like this. Yeah, there's been a lot of murdering. Yeah, there's been a lot of, you know, abortions and so many things. But let me tell you something. What's going to happen in the future is nothing compared to history. It's only that the, the Lord is warning each and one of us. He loves us so much that he's telling us this now to leave. And I want to tell each one of you something. That Christ is coming very, very soon. And it's for us to keep our eyes straight and not keep looking back. Listen, someone once said um, a story. Sounds like a parable. It has a great message to it. Listen. A man went to the doctors and uh, he lost his eyesight, right? And, you know, the, doc the doctor did a couple of tests on him and he received his sight back. But then something happened. He lost his memory. And the man went back and he's like, I lost my, my memory. You got you to gotta do some tests back on me. The man received his memory back. But he lost his sight. He went back to the doctor. He said, you got to do a couple more tests on me. He received his sight, but he lost his memory. This happened like five or six times. The doctor said, you're going to have to make a choice if you want your sight or your memory. And the man said, I already made my choice. It's better for me to know where I am going to, to remember where I was before at. And brothers and sisters, us too, we have to make a choice. Do we want to keep our eyes open and being vigilant for the coming of Christ? Or do we want to be stuck in the past about when we were our old creations? Brothers and sisters, Christ already um, made us a new creation. Which one are you going to be, the foolish or the wise virgin? Brothers and sisters, there's a parable that Christ was speaking about. About the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. That the five foolish virgins weren't ready, but the five wise ones were. And when the time came that the bridegroom came, which Christ picking up his church, getting his people that who are ready for his coming. You, you see? And the the, the lamp, the, the purification, the holiness, and getting right with God and everything. The, the five foolish ones weren't ready to come of Christ. And they miss the coming of the bridegroom. And us Christians, brothers and sisters, the time is not to get right with God. The time is now to get right with God. Who cares if if the ministries don't have high numbers? We When Christ sends us, it's not for the numbers, but for lives to be saved in Jesus' name. So that lives can know that they can be saved. So that lives can know about who is Jesus and that they can be saved from their sins. For it says in Romans how the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now, we need this body, obviously, to die. This needs to go back to, you know, to this, to, to the ground. But we're going to have eternal life with God. There is an afterlife. And whatever you do here to find where you are going. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Christ can make you a new creation. All you have to do is confess that he is Lord and repent of all your sins. Come humbly to him. He loves you so much that he gave his son for you. And Christ made a way for us to reconcile to have a relationship with God and to receive eternal life. But another thing, through his uh, death, burial, and resurrection, he gave us the Holy Spirit. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit 
God wants us to be having the fruit of the Holy Spirit, stated in Galatians chapter 5. Brothers and sisters, us as Christians, we're supposed to be having the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Where in the Bible that it said for leader to speak against leader? In the Bible, it said to be praying for one another, to be fasting for one another, for that brother and sister to grow in God. Brothers and sisters, God is saying to be holy as I am holy. Now, I understand many people are going to be saying that I am not perfect. And I understand I'm not perfect either. But every day the Holy Spirit perfects us in the image of God. Now, listen, we are not gods, but we are sons and daughters of God. We are the image of God. God made us, you know, in his image. Stated in Genesis. But brothers and sisters, we are to be carrying the image of Christ. He he is the light that's in each and one of us. And we are temples and it's a spirit that's in us when we are right with him. And us as temples, we need to be taking care of the temple. Now, brothers and sisters, listen. How, you know, even if there's no food in the refrigerator, God provides. Even if there's many chains and you're praying for your family members, how chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. Everything needs to be in the will of the Father. Everything needs to be led by the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Trinity, three in one. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Three different beings, but they all work as one. All the glory goes to God, but the glory goes to Jesus Christ. And the glory goes to the Holy Spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, listen. It says right here in Revelation. It says in verse 20 again, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Listen, to everything that we do, brothers and sisters, we need to be careful. Brothers and sisters, be guided by the Holy Spirit every day. Every day we are to be guided by the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Lord is the one who guides us every single day. Brothers and sisters, before... You know, like before, you know, as a testimony, like before I used to be very depressed. I used to think that there is no meaning in the world. And when I and when I and my family came to Christ, something beautiful happened. Something amazing happened. There is this hope that was in me once when I found Christ. And it was so amazing. That once when we found Christ, you know, you know, we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. And every day, you know, we were, you know, we were trying to pray more and try to live more of a life of obedience. Slowly by slowly, it happened though. Steps. But I'm a witness that God can transform. I'm a witness. God gives hope to the hopeless. And hope to the despair. Those who are who are needy, that God provides. I'm a witness that God breaks the things of the world around us to make us new. He breaks us and forms us. I don't know if you remember, but God is like a potter. Okay? And we're like the clay, and God's trying to form us how he wants us to be in his sight. Who are you living for? Are you living for the world, or are you living for God? The things of the world is meaningless to sight air. But the things of God is everlasting and eternal. God is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through me. And it's by living. It's by living by the truth of the word. By the way of Christ. And by the life of Christ. Now, none of us can be like Christ. But we are ambassadors of Christ. And we are supposed to be carrying his image every single day. And the enemy has tried to fool his people, um, God's people, by sending his satanic agents around the world spreading lies and false doctrines inside the churches. How there's many false things inside the churches and many false things being spread to one another about, you know, one... Brothers and sisters speaking against each other. Brothers and sisters, you know, being uh, uh, hypocrites, you know, inside the church itself sometimes. 
saying how they pray and they read the Bible and they're not. And God sees everything that we do, brothers and sisters. But God wants us to be carrying his image in each one of us. We're to live every day like if Christ was to come. We don't know about tomorrow. We only know about today. How do you know if Christ wasn't wants to come tomorrow? Christ is the only way to eternal life. And Christ is coming very soon. He wants us as fishermen of, of Christ to be living the way that God that He wants us to. And it's all stated in the Word. God left us a special gift of how to live, of how to get to Him. Many things in the Word. But at the very end of His Word, God wants us to be getting right with Him and to return to the first love, to have a real, true relationship with Him, and to be living by the Word, to be living by the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the Savior. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know something. That, you know, the disciples, you know, they were just fishermen. They were just tax collectors. God uses the least of the world to be great in the kingdom. And Christ came to serve and die for us. You see, Christ's royalty uh, is so different from the earthly kings here. That's why God is the king of kings. He showed his true royalty just by his birth. Of him being born in a manger. Of how it was holiness. Now God is rich. Just not in the way we think. He's rich in holiness. In love. He's rich in many things. Brothers and sisters. In such a holy way. Christ is trying to make us holy. As he is holy. And Christ is the one who guides us. And gives us his word so that we speak it to the nations. That we speak it to lives. Brothers and sisters. He wants us to keep our eyes and be vigilant. Be vigilant so that we are ready. It says in the word. No one knows the day nor the hour. That Christ is coming. Only the Father in heaven. But he said for us to be vigilant. And for the sign of Jonah. Now that will be our sign that Christ is coming very soon. It's been a lot of murdering. A lot of bombing, um, abortions. There's been a lot of things happening. A lot of religions. Serving false idols that literally are demons. These are satanic religions religions. Christ is the only way. And there's been many different, you know, types of groups and looking for God. As long as I have a relationship with Christ and live how God wants us to be living, brothers and sisters, we are saved. Not by our works, but by faith and grace through Jesus Christ. Before you leave, I just want to let you know that God loves you so much. And that the time is now to come to him. Humbly by heart. No matter what you've done in, done in your life. That God will forgive you. But he will see your heart. Are you ready to receive Christ into your life? Are you ready to reconcile with Christ? The time is now, brothers and sisters. I pray everyone who is watching this that this that made this video bless you very greatly. And that this made you to reconcile with Christ or even accept him as your Lord and Savior. And to know that he will guide you every day of your life until he picks up his church. And for the churches to be holy as he is holy. And to pray for one another and to fast for one another for us to be grown in Christ. Spread the love of God. Spread the love of God and that we could escape the judgment of hell and receive eternal life 
through Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Christ is coming very soon. The time is not to get prepared. The time is very soon that Christ is coming to pick up his church. God bless each one of you. And remember, Jesus loves you.